All right, who left this generic amino acid on the set? We're not doing that video right now. Oh, hey, it's Professor S. Uh, this is definitely another five minute video on amino acids, just not what we did last time, so we can, oh, good, thank you, get that out of here. Uh, in this video, I wanna talk about the different types of amino acids and how they interact with each other. Amino acids are placed into four major groups based on their side chain chemistry. Now, as a side note, if you do advanced coursework, you may find that there are more than four groups that get described. I'm all on board for that in advanced coursework, but in introductory biology, four, I think, is the right number. So let's just go through some examples to illustrate the four groups of side chains, starting with isoleucine. Isoleucine has two methyl groups in its side chain. Methyl groups are hydrophobic, therefore this is a nonpolar side chain. There's a good number of amino acids that have nonpolar side chains. So that's one. If there's nonpolar, there must be polar, right? Here's serine. Serine with its hydroxyl group in the side chain. Hydroxyls are hydrophilic. It's a polar side chain. Although this group would be better called polar neutral because it's a polar side chain, but it's not acidic and it's not alkaline, and I think you see what's coming next. Here's glutamate. It's got a carboxyl group in its side chain. That makes it polar, but it also acts as an acid. It's an acidic side chain. Now, important to note, because acids are proton donors, when this side chain acts as an acid, it donates that hydrogen to solution, and when it gives up that hydrogen ion, it takes on a negative charge. So acidic side chains can become negatively charged. That's gonna be important in a future video. If we have acidic side chains, then heck, here's, here's lysine. Lysine's got an amino group in its side chain. It's polar and alkaline. And just as the acidic groups gave up hydrogens, basic or alkaline side chains will act as proton acceptors. And when they pull that hydrogen ion out of solution, they become positively charged. So that idea of acidic side chains becoming negative and uh, alkalines becoming positive is very important when we get into more advanced levels of protein structure in about two videos. Oh, give me a second. All those tables up there uh, list the major side chain groups and all 20 amino acids as they fit into those groups. Now, I tell my own students every semester, I don't realistically expect you guys to memorize all 20 of these amino acids by name, let alone by what group they go in. I do, however, expect you to know the generic structure of an amino acid, and since you should, if you're a responsible biology student, know your major functional groups, you ought to be able to look at a side chain and recognize whether it's hydrophilic and polar, hydrophobic and nonpolar, acidic or alkaline, okay? Um, let me get out of here while they clean up the tables because uh, I want to talk about one more thing before we finish up here. All right, so here we have three amino acids. Let's see what happens when they interact with each other. Okay, yeah, they, they form bonds with each other. Specifically, they form what are called peptide bonds with each other. This is how amino acids connect together to form proteins. Let's isolate this and just focus on two amino acids. A peptide bond is a form of polar covalent bond formed between the amino group of one molecule and the carboxyl group of another. And so we can see the amino to carboxyl connecting peptide bond. There we have the way that protein polymers of amino acids form. Um, but in fact, proteins are made of large numbers of, large numbers of amino acids like this molecule. You can see um, it's got a lot of amino acids and a lot of peptide bonds, so it's called a ta-da, polypeptide. And now that we've established the polypeptide as the base form of proteins, I think we're all set to start actually looking at protein conformations in another five minutes.
so listen, I wanna try something different because I really think when I put the hat on backwards like this, that it makes me look young and hip. You're not young and no one says hip anymore. Fine, I don't look young. Um, rad? No, you're not rad either. Um, fly? No. Uh, fresh? No. I'm slaying it. No, just stop. Bad? No. Uh, groovy? Yes, all the kids these days say groovy all the time. Just do really? the tape. Okay. Hey man, this is Professor S. If you enjoyed that video, here's a couple others that you may find interesting as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new groovy videos that I'm putting out.